This video is going to introduce you to the Python NumPy array. The last video in this playlist showed this computer program and we can see we have on the first line the importing of PyPlot which is a subset of Matplotlib and we're importing it as PLT where PLT will become the pseudoname for PyPlot. Here we can see we create two Python lists called X and Y respectively and on this line we plot X and Y and here we show the graph that is created by the previous line of code and what we will see is the following straight line graph. Now if we consider these two coordinate positions where X is 1 and Y is 3 if we reflect that onto the graph, we can see here we have the dotted line coming up from 1. And of course that dotted line is marking off the second element of our X list. And of course we can see that this takes us to the 3 shown by this dotted line. So where those dotted lines meet is one of the plots. Now, you will need to go back to the previous video to make sure you know why this draws a straight line graph. Now, the computer program we're considering here has generated two Python lists, used the plot method that's associated with PyPlot, and we get, as we've already seen, the straight line graph shown on this slide. Now, using Python lists as shown in this program will work. However, using Python lists with matplotlib isn't normally what people do when they look at producing visual representations for datasets. They use another data structure, and that's what we're going to be talking about in this video. Now the data structure we're going to be using belongs to a Python library and this library is referred to as NumPy or NumPy and it is a Python library rather in the same way as matplotlib is a Python library. And if we consider this library, what we know, it's a useful library for working with arrays. What we've looked at in the previous slide was Python lists. But when we use NumPy, or NumPy as it's often called, we find it's very useful for working with arrays. NumPy is short for numerical Python. We take the NUM and the PY, as you can see highlighted in yellow, to create the name NumPy. Now, because it is a Python library, that is not installed when you install Python on your computer. You have to make arrangements to install it so you can use it. So when we consider this particular library, if we consider what we have to do, we have to go to the command prompt and type pip install numpy, N-U-M-P-Y. And this is very similar to what we did when we installed matplotlib. We did pip install matplotlib, whereas here you can see it's pip install numpy. Now what this will do, it'll locate on the web the necessary files, bring them across the internet to your computer and install them onto your computer so you can use the library. Now here you can see the program we looked at at the very beginning of this video. It's the one that draws a straight line graph. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to draw the same graph, but this time using NumPy, the library. And let's have a look at a computer program, and you can see it is shown here. Now both of these programs are responsible for drawing a straight line graph because of the data we're supplying. Let's take a look at the second program I have brought into view here and, and let's move it to the top left as you can see now. And let's consider this computer program. Well we can see that I've imported NumPy as NP 
And here I've produced two Python lists. And if we have a look, they're called list underscore one and list underscore two. If I come down here to look at this, you can see that I'm creating a numpy array. And look to this and you can see I'm passing the Python list, list underscore one, and I'm passing it to this method. And here we can see we've got dot notation. And here you can see I have got NP. Now that NP is there because if you come here, you can see when I imported NumPy, I imported it as NP, which means I can now refer to the facilities offered by NumPy just by using the alias NP instead of having to write NumPy out in full each time. We can go on now to look at this and we can see that this is taking list underscore two in and we're creating a numpy array. And of course, if we consider what we do next, we go on to this line to plot the graph. And of course, we can see that we're passing in X and Y, whereas before the X and Y were Python lists, here they're examples of numpy arrays. And we pass the X and Y as arguments to this method here we can see we've got dot notation and this side of the dot we can see we've got plt which is the alias for pyplot as shown here when we imported matplotlib.pyplot of course we now go on and execute this statement which shows the graph and we can see that the graph we will get is as shown here Let's now consider both programs we've looked at in this video side by side. Here we can see we've moved this one a little. Here's the second program. And we can see the graph we get as the output from both programs. We get exactly the same output. One has used the numpy arrays and the other has used the Python lists. Now the question is, why would you use numpy arrays rather than python lists now there are good reasons for doing so let's consider the program in the top left of this slide and i want to draw your attention in particular to this line here which says import numpy as np then we can go on and see here we've created python lists now i've only done that because i want to use these to help produce the numpy arrays which we can see on this line we then go on to here where we plot with x and y where in this case the x and y are the numpy arrays and it will plot the graph and i'd like you to compare this statement with this one here and you can see they're identical they both deal with X and Y. Of course, the one I've got highlighted now, the values of X and Y are the Python lists. Whereas in the other program, that's in the top left as you look at the screen, the X and Y were the numpy arrays. But both programs give the output below. The one in the top left has done so using numpy arrays, and the one in the top right has done so using Python lists. Here you can see the Python lists using this program and if you come over here, here you can see we've used the numpy arrays. Now when you're dealing with data science, you use numpy arrays as shown here. You don't use Python lists. In this program that I'm currently highlighting, the one in the top left, you could say well you've used lists above. You've used list underscore one and list underscore two, but that was just to create the numpy arrays as a demonstration program. The numpy arrays would normally be created in different ways, but what I would really like you to note is this here, these imports. When you want to use data science to represent plots of data sets, matplotlib and numpy go together. You will always find that these two will appear 
when you're dealing with large data sets. You import matplotlib.pyplot as plt and you import numpy as mp. So when I, for the rest of this playlist, I'm dealing with plots, you will find that I will not be using Python lists. I will be using the numpy arrays. At this point, you may be asking yourself, why use numpy arrays instead of Python lists? What's the main reason for doing it? Well, we consider some of the salient points. The first thing is numpy arrays are faster to process. Now, essentially, a numpy array takes less memory, takes less binary bytes to represent it than Python lists, which means when the data is moving around your computer system, there is not as much of it to move around. So a Python list of 10,000 elements is much bigger than a numpy array of the same number of elements. And we can look into why that's the case as this playlist goes on. But the thing is, they are faster to process. Other things we need to consider is that numpy arrays have more methods and attributes. Now, what does this mean? Well, it has methods that makes various forms of mathematics easy to action upon a data set. You can do more processing because a numpy array has more methods that will allow for the manipulation of the data in the arrays than a Python list. Now, the thing is, should we not use numpy arrays for everything then? Well, the answer is no. Python lists are very handy for various things, but when we get moving to data science, they're not so good. So we should, under these circumstances, use numpy arrays. Now, the other thing we can refer to as an example of the kind of mathematics you can carry out on a numpy array is that of matrix computation. When you have large data sets, you can manipulate them using matrices. And you would really need to do a bit of background reading on matrix mathematics to really get a handle on to why this is useful. But the thing is, using a numpy array makes matrix mathematics easy, or should I say easier. Other things you might want to consider, the numpy library has taken advantage of some of the improvements in central processing units, the CPUs of computers, because CPUs can now do things in parallel. And the numpy arrays takes advantage of this hardware, whereas Python lists at the moment do not. Other things we need to consider are numpy arrays are objects of the ND array class. Now, ND array gets its name from the fact that the N and the D stand for number of dimensions, and array obviously stands for array. So it's the number of dimensions array class. Now, what does this mean? Well, it means you can have an array that has the following shape, where we simply have a row of a number of elements. What else can we have? Well, we can have an array with this shape where we have a number of rows with a number of elements in each, as you can see, and that's an example of a 2D array. So the number of dimensions here is two. Now, if we wish to create an ND array, an instance of the ND array class, we can do so using this constructor where my underscore array equals numpy dot array and in brackets you can see I'm passing in a list that contains one, two, three, four and five. But of course, here you can see I'm using the full word numpy and we know that if we import appropriately we could use an alias and that's shown on this line. So instead of typing the full numpy, I can put NP, as you can see here. Regardless as to the way in which you choose to import NumPy and use the alias, as I have done in the second example here, you have to remember if you wish to use the NumPy array in your code, 
you have to install the library on your computer, which just to remind you is done as you can see here. In the command prompt, you type in what you can see, pip install numpy. Now, of course, once it's on your computer, when you decide to use it in a computer program, what you have to make sure that you do is put in the appropriate import statement here. And of course, you can see I put import numpy as np. That is why in my code, if I import as shown here, I can use this version of the constructor and use the np, which I've shown in yellow, instead of the full word numpy. So for the conclusion of this video, I'd like to leave you with the following information. The array object in NumPy is an instance of the ND array class. It provides a lot of supporting methods that make working with an ND array easy, particularly with matrix mathematics and mathematics in general. There's a number of other areas in which it supports very well. We also need to remember that ND arrays are very frequently used in data science where speed and the use of resources are important. But the key is, and the key thing I want you to memorize from this video is the following. When you're going to be using plots to represent data sets, you may as well get used to the fact that these two go together. Import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, import numpy as np. And you then refer to pyplot within your code as the alias plt, and you refer to when you're manipulating numpy arrays with the alias np. But of course, in order for these imports to work, you must have made sure that you've pip installed both matplotlib and numpy, and you do that from the command line of your operating system. Please consider subscribing to the channel and click the bell to ensure you get an update every time I upload a video. Maybe you would like to consider supporting the development of these free videos via Patreon. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter and also check out the supporting website.